Not so long ago, I reported on a lady whose entire online persona was complaining about the size of the council flat that she'd been given at the taxpayer's expense. Today, I want to look at an equally hideous example, and this is someone who is so proud of being on benefits, they have made being welfare queen their entire personality. Yes, those of a nervous disposition and those who are easily angered, please do look away now. I'm Britain's welfare queen, and I've spent taxpayer's cash on a boob job, a designer vagina, and a horse. Being on benefits has never held me back. Well, it doesn't sound like you're really being held back from anything worthwhile. Uh, jobless mum of eight boasts about all the luxuries she's bought with taxpayers' cash, claiming that being on benefits has never held her back. Marie, who I'm going to call her because I don't know how her surname is pronounced, it looks a bit like Buchanan with some letters missing, 42, said she treated herself to a boob job, a designer vagina and a horse over the past decade, despite spending most of her adult life on benefits. Now look, I don't want to ever criticise someone's appearance. However, I think an exception can be made when someone has done it to themselves and in this instance Marie has decided that she's going to go from looking relatively normal to looking absolutely hideous in my personal opinion possibly with a long-term view of coming off benefits and starting her OnlyFans account yes I'm sure that's next hence the desperate desire to stay in the public headlines at all times dubbed Britain's welfare queen Marie has received a total of around half a million pounds in taxpayers cash to support her eight children who are all fathered by the same man I like the way they slip that in there as if that is something to be applauded and don't get me wrong in some situations that is something to be applauded but it's only something to be applauded if you are both working together and working working hard to support the eight children that you've brought into this world. But the former lap dancer said that leaving off the state has now allowed her to live a life of extravagance. So I can see this thought going full circle, can't you? And some of the publicity shots she has shared in this very article may indeed allude to her future plans and why she is keeping herself in the headlines. She was a former lap dancer, which can be fairly lucrative, albeit, you know, a questionable moral choice if you are that way inclined. However, it sounds like she's gone from there, living a life on benefits, and now maybe she's thinking that she can go around again and maybe sell a few subscriptions on OnlyFans. If only she can make herself as publicly known as possible. And yes, I appreciate the irony and the hypocrisy that in a very, very tiny little way, I am actually helping her do that. It comes as Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer yesterday announced a crackdown on benefits fraud in a bid to tackle worklessness. It's very strange whenever these stories come up or whenever this issue is raised that the first thing the government do, and the Tories were just as guilty of that, although I think the Labour Party are very much the party of the benefits scrounger, whenever this is brought up, they talk about tackling benefits fraud. However, in most instances, it isn't fraud. These people are claiming things that they are entitled to, i.e. they are claiming things from schemes for which they qualify. The way to tackle this supposed benefits fraud, i.e. people who spend their entire lives on benefits, who are able to work and are just choosing not to, is to reform the system. You're not tackling any kind of fraud. You have set the system up to fail in this way. Sorry to interrupt the video. Only 5% of the people who watch these videos regularly are actually subscribed. If you don't mind just hitting that subscribe button, it's completely free. There's no obligation. You can unsubscribe anytime and there will be no hard feelings from me. There's also a link in the description below. If you fancy buying me a pint, it says buy me a coffee, but a pint's much better, isn't it? Particularly on a warm day like today. Anyway, back to the video. Not of what I'm saying, of course, is to go against those people who genuinely require benefits to survive. There are people who, for whatever reason, simply can't work simply can't earn a living and there are also people who require additional financial support in order to cater for their additional needs that's why i believe at the heart of it the welfare system is a very positive thing it's something that britain should be proud of however it's so full of loopholes and it's so bloated by people looking to exploit it in whichever way that is possible that it's not really fit for purpose anymore and maybe the people who need the help and we saw this with the removal of the winter fuel allowance for older people the people who need the help maybe aren't actually getting the help they need Whereas people like this, people like Marie here, are able to scrounge and to live a relatively comfortable life without ever lifting a finger to help herself. She caused fury in 2018 after travelling to Turkey for a £1,500 boob job, going from a 34A to a 34D. Not entirely necessary detail there, but this is the Daily Mail reporting from, so uh, yes, I guess her bra size was always going to come up at some point. She also bought a house with her benefits, but later said she had to give him away as she couldn't afford to keep him. I paid £600 up front for the horse, that's very cheap for a horse, and then I had to pay an additional £100 a month to keep him at the yard, and food was around £25 a month. Personally, as a lover of animals, it sounds like a very, very good job that this lady had to give up 
this horse because a hundred pounds a month to keep a horse in uh, any kind of accommodation and 25 pound a month on food for a horse is simply not sufficient to give that horse any good quality of life now there might be some equestrian people out there who might be able to correct me on that but i believe that's hardly money for half decent stabling and half decent nutrition for you know a horse to be properly looked after marie goes on to say it was a big mistake i was rubbing it in people's faces and i was showing off and i really regret that now this is the very person who quite clearly has chosen to be part of this article. She is giving an interview. She is speaking about the things that she's bought. She's speaking about the money she has spent, the taxpayer's money that she has spent on unnecessary frivolous items and frivolous surgeries. We live now, don't we, in a rage bait society. Uh, rage equals attention equals eyeballs equals money. Unfortunately, that is the way things work. When people are questioned about the benefits they live on, the fact they have housing benefit, child benefit, and, you know, illegitimately claimed disability benefit and all the rest of it, and they say, oh, well, yes, but I pay rent. Well, yes, but if you're paying rent with someone else's money that has been given to you to pay that rent, then you're not self-sufficient, are you? You are still getting that accommodation from the taxpayer. It's a, an argument I've had many times with a handful of different people, and I, I don't really understand their, their angle. That just because money comes into them and then goes out again, that doesn't mean that was ever their money. It was money given to them to pay for accommodation. But anyway, and I digress. Now, in the UK, you are entitled to child benefit, I believe, for your first two children. And that's irregardless of your means, so it doesn't matter whether you are on the poverty line or whether you are a millionaire. You are entitled to claim child benefit for your first two children. This is obviously designed to ensure there are as few as possible children living in poverty, and that can't be considered necessarily a bad thing. Of course, this doesn't undermine the fact that people maybe should plan financially when they are considering having children. And if you are having children, then it is ultimately going to be your responsibility to look after them. And that's in a multitude of different ways, including financial or at least it should be. She explained that there is little incentive to work as her family is better off on benefits. Now, I could hark on here about personal pride, setting a good example for your children, etc., etc., which I do believe are important factors, but the very fact of the matter is, if she is going to be better off financially on benefits, and she doesn't have to work, and she gets to spend more time with her children, then as much as I have utter disdain for people who do this and are proud of it, it's understandable why she wouldn't decide to make any changes in her life. Yes, like I say, there is pride in earning your own money. There is pride in financially supporting your own children. When you would take a significant pay cut by getting up, going out to work every day and spending less time with your kids, it's a bit of a no-brainer once you put yourself into that situation. She said back in 2021, it is a huge struggle for me. Two of my daughters are over the age of 16 now, so I have had my benefits like child benefits and tax credits cut. Well, the reason you've had those cut is because those children can now legally go out and earn some money. Yes, there is stipulations about staying in full-time or some form of education or apprenticeship until you're 18, but there is nothing to stop you at 16 going out and getting a part-time job and contributing towards the household. However, with a role model such as Marie, I can't imagine that her daughters are going to do anything other than follow in her footsteps. Hopefully, she will see her being held up as such a negative role model and maybe make an alternative decision to go in a different direction, and we can only hope that will be the case. However, it's very, very likely, and we see it time and time again, that generation after generation perpetuates this type of living. I'm around £160 per week worse off now. It's a struggle, and I use food banks just to survive. I basically live on food banks at the moment. She's £160 a week worse off. Not that she's getting £160, no, just £160 less. Now, if you are earning minimum wage, then the chances are that you are taking home probably around £300 a week, I believe. Maybe it's slightly more, slightly less, something like that. So she has lost just lost, not what she's down to, but just lost half a week's wages for someone working full-time on minimum wage. And she's complaining that she's lost out on that amount. That is where the system goes wrong. Marie also revealed she receives horrendous online abuse. How haters tell her she's a slut and say they hope she dies. Now, there is absolutely no excuse for wishing death upon anyone. There's no excuse for flat-out insulting people. I get it very occasionally here on YouTube myself. However, there is certainly some responsibility to fall on this woman who has put herself in this situation and continues to choose to contribute to and allow articles such as this to run in order to perpetuate her own public identity and her own image, which, like I alluded to at the start, dare I say she's going to eventually try and use for some sort of alternative career. And OnlyFans is my first guess. I have to say I'm a scrounger and have threats of men coming to get me to teach me a lesson. Again, no excuse for online threats of violence, no excuse for death threats. Um, however, in terms of labelling you a scrounger, I, in some respects, I guess if the cap fits, 
It's probably some sort of designer Burberry or Louis Vuitton cap knowing this woman. So what do you think? Do you think that people like this woman are to blame by basically choosing this form of lifestyle for themselves, choosing what they consider an easy option, basically making sure they don't ever have to lift a finger to go to work or whatever in their lives to support themselves and their family because the system is there to support them? Or is the system at fault? Do we need a radical overhaul of the benefit system which prevent people like this from living a comfortable and sometimes extravagant life off the back of taxpayer money? Let me know your thoughts. Until next time, stay safe and stay sane.